I like these days. I like these days a lot, especially when we can take a step back and realize just how right we were. Oh, it's great as it washes over us. And I'm gonna take a, a tip from Frankie and just say, we got a lot of things to cover, so let's just jump right in. So today is one of those days where a little bit of a red day. And uh, it's kind of surprising after we talk about the things we're going to reveal. Yeah, uh, Bitcoin, I think it went below 60,000 for a second. Now over seven days, 3.8%, everything's down across the board. Wow, the market cap is uh, below 2.4 trillion. That's been, uh, taking quite some time. And we just see that a red day, red day, red day, whatever. This is a prime example of why we shouldn't really pay attention to the numbers go up, the numbers go down. It's all about the long term. And we're taking a look at that. It really comes down to the whole prospect of what we're talking about today, JP Morgan. And to give you a little bit of a, of a background, just how big JP Morgan is, JP Morgan Chase is the largest bank in the world as of 2024. Now, things could change, things could go a little bit sideways, whatever else, but it is far and away the largest bank. Market cap is 500, it's half a trillion dollars, essentially. Bank of America, 288 billion. Uh, Industrial and Commercial Bank of China, 249 billion. China. Wells Fargo, 208 billion. And then a, and a couple other banks that uh, trail off. So pretty big bank. And this just came out about, I don't know, 30 minutes ago, an hour ago. Looks like uh, America's largest bank world's largest bank, J.P. Morgan Chase discloses the spot Bitcoin ETF holdings, a new SEC filing. And this is actually, was predicted actually by uh, Michael Saylor. And he said there was like three reasons of what would actually cause Bitcoin to really go parabolic. And one of those was having the revelation as far as the IRS filings of just who is actually holding Bitcoin, not why they're doing it, but just actually the ones that are actually holding. And we can see right now that that is what is happening. Now, I don't know exactly how much they are holding, if they're holding a dollar or $10 billion, I'm not for sure because it's a little bit unclear about what, what this article talked about. But all I know is that JP Morgan Chase, and this is probably not a little bit, that they actually are holding Bitcoin. And it's a funny thing because as we look at the, at the timeline of the history of JP Morgan and its CEO, Jamie Dimon, we can just chronologically take a look at what's happened over the years, going all the way back almost 10 years ago, which is a funny thing because you know, 10 years ago, it was amazing that it was even on the radar. And, I, and, and you will start to think about the people that you have heard in your long journey in crypto and digital assets of how many people told you that this was trash and that it was going to zero and that it was a big Ponzi scheme and it was a tulip mania bubble and all the other nonsense that's out there. So let's just take a trip down memory lane. In 2015, Jamie Dimon said virtual currency will be stopped. In September 2017, JP, JP Morgan CEO Jamie Dimon said Bitcoin is a fraud. That will eventually blow up. Then in 2018, he said, you know what? I regret calling it. I believe in the technology behind it, which is the same thing a lot of nation states will say. It's kind of funny. China will say the exact same thing. Like, we don't believe in Bitcoin, but we believe in blockchain. And that's a big difference. But uh, inevitably, they all kind of come around. And then, of course, in 2020, Jamie Dimon says, Bitcoin is not my cup of tea. Even JP Morgan is warm to it. Then in 2021, they said, hey, maybe some investors could make 1% uh, of the portfolio. And then, of course, they were actually actively managing Bitcoin funds or moving into it as time went on. So, again, this is just one of those stories where we were right. And it's, it's good to just kind of sit back and just kind of take that all in because it's a slog. It's a, it's a slog to invest into things when, you know, you believe in it, we believe in it. But then we've got the traditional finance, as some people might call them the smart money. I don't call them the smart money. I call them the big money. As they can come and say to us, you guys are morons, you guys are idiots, and you're going to lose everything. But here they are in the background. So watch what they do, not what they say. And I love this post by Crypto T, where this pretty much sums it up. Of JP Morgan CEO, Jamie Dimon, sitting there going, I wonder what we got at his price. Anyhow, let me know what you think about that in the comment section. I love these days, and it doesn't stop there. Wells Fargo. Now, this is actually an older story. I think this broke uh, this morning. Uh, looks like uh, Wells Fargo, America's third largest bank, I think it's the fourth largest bank in the world, also owns spot Bitcoin ETFs. And it's not just them. So here's what we have. According to the filing, Wells Fargo holds position in Grayscale's spot Bitcoin ETF, ProShares Bitcoin Strategy Features ETF, and shares in Bitcoin Depot, marking a notable entry, of course. And that wasn't just them. Wells Fargo, on top of that, earlier this week, investment firm giant, I'm going to butcher this name, uh, Susquehanna. Nailed it. 
International Group revealed an SEC fine that it holds 1.8 billion in spot Bitcoin and other Bitcoin ETFs, joining a wave of massive financial institutions disclosing their exposure to Bitcoin. Again, it just kind of just keeps steamrolling. And as we move into the later part, Q, no, we're already in Q2, 2024, but Q3, Q4, going into 2025, I can see these catalysts and these narratives actually filing, filling out to where we could actually see a nice little bull run moving into uh, potentially next year. But I like to see that. That is fantastic. Also, good news for BlockFi uh, people who got screwed over. BlockFi partners with Coinbase for fund distribution. Shuts down the web platform. Here's what we have. So if you're part of BlockFi, I never got into BlockFi. I never got into FTX. But I did get into Voyager and Celsius and got screwed over there. So I know what you're going through. Uh, this was uh, a post that said that the collaboration with Coinbase, this is BlockFi and Coinbase, will enable eligible BlockFi interest accounts, retail loans, and private clients to withdraw their funds. Now, I think this has actually already happened because here it says the lender informed clients on Thursday, May 9th. Today is Friday, May 10th. That is the deadline to withdraw digital assets from the current estate distribution has passed. They will receive instructions on setting up a Coinbase account to facilitate withdrawal. So apparently this has already come through and already happened. So again, you will, this is a, a tweet. What it's essentially saying is if you miss that opportunity to withdraw funds, you will receive further information via email. And I cannot stress this enough. You are going to get scam emails. If you're in BlockFi, even if you're not in BlockFi, I guarantee some scammers have your information. So Make sure that you don't trust the email that you receive, that you verify. Try to reach out even to me and on, on X and just to see where things, I mean, the fraud that is going to come out is going to be massive. So just to be aware that the emails you're going to get, I'd say probably half of them are going to be BS. And the one that you really need is going to be tough to find. So good luck to you. I'll try to update as much as we possibly can. We'll go from there. And also, more good news. Uh, price predictions. I don't like price predictions, as you guys know. I think they're worthless, but it allows us to dream a little bit. But there was something that, that Jack Dorsey said, former CEO of Twitter, now uh, head of Block. Uh, he says Bitcoin will be worth at least a million by 2030. I don't care if it is or not. I, I, I will have plenty of Bitcoin by that time. I already have, I mean, I have, a, I have a reasonable amount right now. I don't care if it's a million. I don't care if it's 10 million. I don't care if it's 500,000. It's gonna be the best performing asset I'm pretty sure I will have in my entire portfolio. That includes real estate. But it's what he said down here, which made me stop and think. So Dorsey, now the head of the financial services firm Block. So it's not just like Jack Dorsey is, excuse me, uh, was just here for Twitter and you know, just did little bits here. And then of course, Elon Musk bought him out. But I mean, he knows a little bit about financial services. Block is massive. And he noted that Bitcoin's price isn't actually the most interesting aspect of Bitcoin. This is something I never really thought about. And now I'm going to really make sure that I talk about this more and more. He says, the most amazing thing about Bitcoin, apart from the founding story, is anyone, anyone who works on it or gets paid in it or buys it for themselves, everyone who puts any effort into making it better is making the entire ecosystem better, which makes the price go up. So I know like some people will say, well, Rob, we don't like these runes. We don't like, like these NFTs that are being built on top of uh, Bitcoin. We don't like layer twos like Stacks and Core, but you don't understand. And, and now it totally makes sense. As people start to build and use Bitcoin more and more, you shouldn't, I mean, some of the Bitcoin maxes, I guess I understand what they hated, the ordinals and whatnot, but we really should really embrace and go, oh, you're trying to make it better? You know, in some way, shape or form, I know it rises the cost up for transactions because of ordinals and runes and things like that, but, on another note, Michael Saylor is using that same thing for digital IDs. So I think we'll all flourish in that sector. And uh, I'm gonna try to bring a little bit more light to that. And I think that the next big wave of the next narrative that we could see on top of real world assets and Web3 gaming and DeFi and RMC the D-Pin, I think is gonna be layer twos and building on Bitcoin. So let me know what you think about that in the comments section. I never thought of it that way. It's a good one. Gotta give it up to Jack on that one. And then also let's talk about just the Couple of altcoins. First, Render pumps 11% after Apple mentioned Oxygen. I must have missed this whole story. This was uh, 13, well, it says 13 hours ago, but it was really a couple of days ago. So Render token jumped 11%. Actually, it was like on, I think it was May 8th. Render token jumped 11% after Apple briefly mentioned Octane, a 3D design software powered by the Render network. 
in its Keystone presentation showing off its M4 chip on its latest iPad. And I guess there was a commercial or some kind of uh, snippet of information that was put out as far as video wise. And it says, uh, you can literally see the render logo in the video. So that is essentially a partnership between Apple and Render. And this was, bah, 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 this is a May 7th post. Everything started to hear about this on May 8th. And look at the price. I, wa I wanted to include this just to remind people that as good as things are, and the narrative as good as they are, people will still take profits. And you have to understand the psychology of investors. Not everybody is gonna diamond hands forever and be like, oh, that's a cool story. Let me take some, let me take some profits. It's just how it is. I mean, just, that's just how it is. So May 7th, 10 bucks. And then of course it dropped for some reason, which is weird. And cause I think the story was released on May 7th. Then on May 8th, this is three o'clock in the morning. Let me blow this up. Nine o'clock and it cratered down here until 3 p.m. This is mountain time. So that would be 5 p.m. Eastern Center time when you know, financial services actually you know, concludes. The price is 9.49. So whenever this, this announcement had, it must have happened over here and then people caught wind of it. And what did they do? They sold. And then the more people heard about it, they sold again. And they wrote it back up here. And what happens? People sell. But, but you will notice it is a nice trajectory of where it's going, even though it looks like Render is doing very hot for what it is. So just something to keep in mind. I think that's a, a great play, especially congratulations to Render holders. I am one of those. Of course, that's why I talk about it, because I'm biased. But congratulations for holding on to a project that looks like you do fantastic work. And then lastly, a friend of mine, uh, Jesus Martinez, now has two channels. One, Jesus Martinez, for gaming. Other one is Classy Games, or I think it's Classy Crypto, which deals with DeFi. Uh, he put out this information. I didn't know this. He says the meme coins won in Q1. They, they, won this, they won this battle. And Jesus is a big, big gamer, big Web3 believer. I've had him on the show a couple of times. Great guy. I did not know it was this, it was this big. Look at this. Look at this. The, you know, I, I used to laugh at meme coins too. I mean, I mean, I got into bonk and I got into hot dog, Costco hot dog not too long ago. That did fine. But look at this. Meme coins, real world assets, AI, DeFi, DeFi. And everybody was talking about these, and people would laugh at meme coins, but it is where it, it is where it is. The question is, why did it do so well? And of course, people will say, every time I bring up meme coins, they say, yeah, but that's just last quarter. That's just a flash in the pan. I don't think so. I don't think so. I'm going to tell you why. It's because all these different assets that are coming out, real world assets, AI, DPIN, DeFi, layer one, everything that's here, even layer two that I just talked about, you have to understand of who gets in first. You know who gets in first? Investors, VCs, seed rounds, pre-seed, private rounds. They get in there before you do because we're all retail, right? And then when retail gets in, guess what happens? I mean, there may be lockup periods and things like that, but as time goes on, they tend to want to make some gains. With meme coins, a lot of them, not all of them, you'll take a look at them. The circulating supply and the total supply is released on day one. There is no pre-mine, not pre-mine, there's no pre-rounds, there's no pre-seed, there's no seed rounds, no private rounds, it's all right there. Have fun. And I think that is a level playing field, and I can get behind that. So uh, congratulations to the meme coin holders. I am a big believer in Bonk. I've been talking about this since 2023. I think it's the next Dogecoin, and there's a way to stake it. It's all by smart contracts and things, not like you know individual people. I did a video on it. I linked in the description. You can check it out. But remember, everything's risky, so have at it. That's it for today. I just want to do something down and quick on Friday just to get everybody uh, up to speed, but that's it for this session. If you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive.